In the age of steam, rotary snowplows hurled snow 300 feet and carved paths through mountains no other machine dared touch until Alaska's cold stopped them dead. They once cleared 3,000 miles in a single season, but when coal froze solid and firemen fought ice by burning wreckage, survival itself came into question. How could these iron titans win in the Rockies, yet freeze in their tracks up north? The answer is not just mechanical, it is a warning, and its true cost began the moment nature struck back. Steam billowed from the rotary's stack as the Union Pacific's mechanical department gathered at Alpine Tunnel. Engineers in stiff wool coats circled the machine. Their faces set in concentration as they inspected the nine-foot steel disc at the heart of the plow. Curved blades, slick with grease and cold to the touch, promised a new kind of power. When the signal came, the plow's impeller spun up with a metallic whine, and the waiting crowd, press, rival railroad men, and skeptical locals watched as snow erupted in a wide, glittering arc. The machine hurled powder 300 feet from the track, a spectacle that turned heads and drew headlines. Trade bulletins boasted of a 60-ton beast that could clear 3,000 miles in a single season. Newspapers spun stories of the rotary's reach, and the claim of a 300-foot throw became legend overnight. In the cab, the real work played out. Firemen shoveled coal into the hungry firebox, sweat running down their faces despite the cold outside. The heat in the cramped cab was stifling, every breath thick with coal dust and steam. Water was fed into the boiler by hand, the rhythm of shovels and the roar of the impeller fusing into a relentless drive forward, a constant fight to keep heat and steam alive. Observers at St. Elmo and Alpine Tunnel took careful notes, hoping to bring this edge to their own lines. The Union Pacific's public relations machine spun the story into a triumph. Photographs captured by William Henry Jackson froze the moment, turning the rotary's violent eruption of snow into an icon of industrial ambition. Crews experimented with reversing the blades, angling the throw to clear deeper banks, pushing the technology to its limits and beyond. The rotary snowplow became more than a machine. It was a promise that winter could be controlled, that the Rockies would no longer stand in the way of the railroad's advance. For a brief moment, confidence in steam power was absolute and the future seemed certain. Subscribe to uncover more engineering mysteries. Rogers Pass in the winter of 1888 brought a reality check for rotary snowplows. Avalanche country. There was nothing like the open slopes of the Rockies. Snow fell in waves, thick and wet, packed with ice, rocks, and full-grown trees torn from the slopes above. Clearing a path was not just a matter of spinning blades and brute force. Crews stepped into a world where the first move was often to set dynamite charges. Before the rotary could even approach, teams had to blast apart the frozen wall left by each slide, sometimes a dozen feet thick, fused with timber and stone. Only then could the 60-ton plow, pushed by three or four locomotives, begin its assault on the loosened debris. Every inch forward was a fight. The rotary's impeller slammed into snow that refused to give, the curved blades shrieking against hidden rocks. Men worked around the clock, oiling joints and watching for the telltale groan of a gear about to seize. Locomotive wheels spun helplessly on ice slick rails, sand scattered for traction, steam venting into the frigid air. The strain showed everywhere on the faces of the crews, in the battered couplings, in the endless cycle of shoveling, blasting, and crawling forward a few feet at a time. Even when the way was cleared, Victory felt temporary. Another slide could erase hours of work in seconds, burying track and trapping the rotary itself. There were nights when the plow vanished beneath fresh snow, and the only way out was to dig by hand. Rogers Pass proved that for all its power, the rotary was just one tool in a desperate struggle. The mountains set the rules, and every mile gained came at a cost. The promise of unstoppable progress faded into doubt as crews learned that technology alone could not tame the wild heart of avalanche country. 
At 50 degrees below zero, the fireman's world shrank to the inside of the cab and to the endless fight to keep the machine alive. Coal in the tender froze into a solid block, impossible to break apart with a shovel. The water in the tanks turned to ice and pipes split open as they expanded. Oil that should have flowed freely turned thick as molasses, refusing to coat the gears that groaned with every revolution. Frozen valves jammed without warning. Crews wrapped them in burlap and set fire to whatever wood they could scrounge. Old ties, driftwood, shipping crates, just to thaw a trickle of water for the boiler. Breath froze to mustaches before a man could lift the next scoop of coal. Each hour, the rotary slowed, metal grinding louder as the oil turned to sludge. Out here, no one cared about throw distances or headlines. The plow was fighting for its life. Inside the rotary snowplow, a nine-foot steel impeller dominated the machine's core. Curved blades arranged in a perfect circle scooped snow and hurled it outward with each revolution. Power came from a two-cylinder steam engine, its pistons driving a heavy gear train that demanded constant lubrication. Manufacturer diagrams reveal a system designed for brute force but not for mercy. Every bolt and bearing was a potential failure point in deep cold. Three main breakdowns haunted crews. Snow packed into the blades and jammed the impeller solid. Oil thickened to sludge and starved the gears. Feed water pipes froze until the boiler choked. A mechanical historian explains that even a minor lapse in oiling could seize the entire drive in minutes. The rotary's promise depended on every part moving in harmony. But in Alaska's cold, the margin for error vanished. When one system failed, the whole machine stopped, sometimes for good. Every gallon of water and every pound of coal had to be hauled in over a single fragile supply line. Foreman tracked the dwindling stockpile with mounting anxiety, knowing that if the supply train stalled or broke down, the rotary would be stranded. It's boiler cooling, its crew left with nothing but the cold and silence. Alaska Railroad memos from the 1920s warn of this razor-thin margin, one missed delivery, and the machine froze in place. The logistics crew worked without rest, juggling priorities as storms closed in, dispatching runners ahead to scout for blockages and rationing fuel for the next push. Even as the rotary's reputation faded, new machines waited in the wings. Caterpillar tractors, faster and more flexible, began to edge out steam plows, able to cut a path when the rails disappeared under drifts. But in these years, everything still depended on that single thread of steel and hope stretching back to the depot. At 1.30 in the morning, the mountains above Wellington unleashed their full force, a thunderclap split the darkness, and a low roar swelled into a wall of sound as the avalanche broke free. In seconds, thousands of tons of snow, ice, and timber surged down the slope, striking the trains with a violence no machine could withstand. Passenger coaches and the rotary plow were lifted off the rails as if weightless, hurled nearly a thousand feet into the ravine below. Inside, men and women were jolted awake, Thrown against windows and walls, the world spinning as steel and wood buckled around them. Some scrambled for roof hatches, clawing at snow that pressed in from every side. Others kicked through shattered glass, fighting for a pocket of air. The entire hillside was in motion. Survival came down to instinct. Dig, push, breathe, move toward any hint of light in the suffocating dark. By three in the morning, the mountains had fallen silent. The only sound left was the faint hiss of cooling metal buried deep beneath a world of snow. Dawn crept over the ravine, revealing a landscape stripped bare, trains twisted and half-submerged, tracks erased, timber and debris scattered in a scar down the slope. Nothing moved but the slow drift of steam rising from what remained of the rotary plow. In the stillness, survivors stared out at the emptiness, trying to grasp the scale of what had been lost. First light photographs captured the aftermath, a sweep of white and broken iron, marking the end of confidence in steel and steam. 
Even now, winter storms routinely shut down rail lines across North America despite satellites and sensors. The mountain never negotiates. Every season, engineers test the edge of human ambition, and nature still writes the final rules. What would you risk to keep the world connected? Share your thoughts below.